All right, so the seventh studio album from Royce. <clears throat> I have spent most of the night listening to this thing. And, I mean, track track number one, which is just uh, the intro, I was just kind of like, you know, Kanye shrug, basically. Um, but then we, we get to track number two, and I was like, all right, this is good, this is good. And then, like, like the ending, like, the the last few bars, I was just like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, when it, when it got to, like, Tar Baby, I was just like, wait, what? Goodness. Track number three, My Parallel. I, I just, I love, like, the African-sounding style drums, and uh, it just, it's just, uh, just breezy, just, just, just vibes from this bad boy. And, and then, it gets a shout out to uh, my boy Jill Scott Heron. Track number four, Caterpillar, is an immediate favorite for me. I, I love this track, okay? This track sounds like Royce and M and the rest of them. It, it sounds like they should all be, like, hooded in a graveyard while spitting and, like, pacing back and forth in the usual rapper hand movements. <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel like this track was just like, hey, let's just jump, let's just throw on an eerie beat and just spit over it. And um, this is, and let's just, just flex and just spit some crazy bars to it. And that's pretty much this song. And I love this fucking song. Oh, God. And then when, when Eminem comes in, boy, it's like, it's like the instrumental is like mystical and like eerie. It's just bars all over this, all over this thing. Yo, Eminem was just going off. Holy sweet Jesus with some of these bars when he's talking about um, Anderson Silva or uh, he was talking about the, the the insect about the wasp. I was just like, yo, oh, oh my God! Track number five, Godspeed. Just just the ah, uh, just the the instrumental. It just sounds so heavenly and just bars, just bars, jeez. Just bars. Um, I particularly love the line where he goes, Lord, as my shepherd, the devil, uh, the devil's my Doberman pincher. Uh, the industry said I had to be an alcoholic. When we, when we were having threesomes, we were doing acid and having seizures. And just, whew. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and say that uh, track, track number five was a, a favorite. Track number six, dumb. Uh, th this track was good. It was it was it was fine. Um, but I, I especially like the the middle finger to the to the Grammys. <laughs> track number seven. Who who are you? Who are you? Oh my God! First off, I, I gave this track like like a ten out of ten. Uh, this is this is another immediate favorite. Just goosebumps. Uh, just just goosebumps all over the place. <laughs> like there's just something so haunted about this track. It took me aback with his dialogue about his father and himself. The connection between the two just showcasing overwhelming emotional moments that just made my jaw drop from Royce's just blunt, just brutal honesty. Also, the, the sound of paper on, on this track was very similar to the, the sound of, uh, of paper in, in, in the in the first track. Track number eight, Cocaine. I, I, another great one. I, I, another another great track. How uh, I just love how chill um, this this track is. How uh, just like it, it makes your head bob, but there's like this uh, really relaxing instrumental, uh, which is interesting because what he's actually is talking about is dark and like profound at the same time. There are some startling lyrics surrounding the concept of I'm proud to say that I'm an addict who inherited your pain. Damn. Man, oh man. Uh we're 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 still going. I mean, uh, you know, tra track number track number 9, Life is Fair. I thought was a, a a great track as well. First off, this shit starts like a movie at the beginning, you know? It sounds like a movie coming on at the beginning when you're hearing like the outside sounds, maybe the sounds of uh, the neighborhood. And then we receive these warm, crispy snare hits as Royce comes in, spinning some incredibly compelling and thought-provoking imagery about the effects of, of a harsh upbringing, basically. And, man, 
goodness, good track. Immediate favorite, are you kidding me? Him and Jake Cole just, just went on and just went in on our way back to that black amusement park. Uh, there's a lot of love um, shouted out to this amusement park. <laughs> and there are just these lyrically deep as fuck moments uh, from both Jake Cole and Royce. And I, I just, I love the smooth as fuck instrumentation. It sounds like a perfect mix of like hip hop and jazz. Uh, or at least there has to have been some heavy jazz influence. Also, J. Cole snapped. Track number 11, Legendary. It's, 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 a, it's definitely like a solid track, but the thing that really stands out is just the, just the wacky, wonky, bizarre instrumental and, uh, and synth noises. Honestly, track number 12, Summer on Lock, is good, but it reminds me of the track with Eminem on it. It just sounds like Royce just wanted to to get just just get the boys in the in the booth and just start spitting some awesome stuff to uh, a dope beat. That that kind of seems to be the summary of this track. But uh, some of the 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 highlights. Um, I'm trying to fuck Cardi in a pair of uh, Cardi. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, just that moment. <laughs> Track number 13, uh, called Amazing. This, this, this song is amazing, <laughs> okay? This is one of my immediate favorites off the album. I, I love how it's, it's just like, it, it's, it's, it's so cinematic. It is so cinematic this track as Royce he like walks in, into some store like a 7-eleven or something like that with his kids he goes to the counter and then he starts to uh, narrate you know moments from his past you know he, he starts to go down memory lane and he does it in such a vivid vivid way I mean it's, it's, it's almost as if like he's painting uh, like movie scenes just with like lyrics and sound effects Oh yeah, and uh, uh, I think her name is like Melanie uh, Rutherford or something like that. Uh, I apologize if I mess up her na her name, but my God, her voice is simply just gorgeous. Track number fourteen, outside, a, 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 another good track and a, a very heartfelt and just uh, fascinating um, sort of like letter to like his child or his children or his kid or his kids. Ah, uh, very solid track. Guys, we're back here again. Another favorite. Another favorite, okay? Uh, track number 15, Power, okay? This to put this in context, I gave this track a 10 out of 10. It's told as if he was possessed by some fever dream that he couldn't shake. On this track, Royce displays, like, exceptional storytelling skills. As he narrates just how bittersweet and dark things could get around family during the holiday, the holiday season, like say Thanksgiving or, or Christmas. God, he did it again! He did it again! Another 10 out of 10! God! It, it, this, this might... God, his... his God! It, it, God! This, this might actually be the best example of him utilizing storytelling skills on this whole album. I, I, I thought that he was just r remarkable on this, this song, with him talking about how him and like his brothers, they went to some park to play basketball. It, it's, it's perhaps the most immersive storytelling on the, on the entire record. Ah, uh, goodness, let's quickly wrap this up. I mean, maybe he could have ended the album a little bit earlier. And I, I just don't know that the replay value is that high for me personally. Um, I just don't know that lyrically, sonically, message-wise, um, the, over, the overall concepts, I just don't know that this is an album for me to consistently come back to again and again and again like some kind of fiend. But listen, this album, make no mistake, I thought, I thought this album was, was fantastic. I think that... Um, the instrumentals are, I think the instrumentals are very good. Royce being so vulnerable and emotive and so lyrically sharp and, um, you know, and thought-provoking. And particularly, the, the sto the, his storytelling, the way that he brings us through certain memories, uh, dark memories, harsh memories, uh, is both um, surprisingly profound 
and uh, just this record, it just takes you back. I don't know that it's a masterpiece, but I know that this is damn excellent. And personally, I'm...